Last night's primaries. What, what do they say about the Republican Party and uh, who will take on Barack Obama? Well, who better than author, journalist, and former presidential speechwriter David Trump to tell us exactly what is going on and what will happen? David, are, are you a happy man after last night? Well, I, I think it's, uh, I'm a relieved man. I'm very glad to see Mitt Romney on, on his way. Um, but it was, it was a squeaker. And it was a squeaker as much for the delegates as it is for the overall vote count. Because, as you know, it's not winner take all in Michigan. It's winner take some. Yeah. Yeah. Now, after this, I mean, television becomes increasingly important, I, I would think, in the primaries. Surely Romney now, and he can outspend his, his main rival two to one, he, do, he, he, he must be extremely confident. Well, you know, he, I think he probably is. But here's here's what Romney has to be worried about. First, um, the, the the voter resistance to him in the Republican Party is very real. Yeah. He lost people who make less than a hundred thousand dollars. Republicans who make less than a hundred thousand dollars. That has to be ominous for him in the general election. Remember, eighty percent of Americans make less than a hundred thousand yeah. uh, dollars. And and he also has been. Uh, he also has to worry that if. He is not doing well in Michigan in the general election. Uh, this is a state that's very dependent on the auto industry. He opposed the auto bailout, um, and he that became a re really haunted him in this race. Uh, and he has to wonder his own native state will he carry it in the general after this past week? You have to worry. Yeah, his father was governor, was he not? His father was a very popular governor, uh, but. Um, states changed, and, and Mitt Romney put himself in a different place. Uh, in order to nail down the Republican nomination, he has, for example, just this past Friday, he gave a big speech calling for a second big tax cut after the, he's already committed to making the Bush tax cuts permanent. He's now called for an additional big tax cut, mostly benefiting, benefiting the upper income brackets. Uh, that Republican primary voters and Republican primary donors like that a lot, but even Republican, um, you know, Repu those Republicans who make less than hundred thousand dollars, not so crazy about it, and non-Republicans really not so crazy about it. Mm -hmm. Now, does any of this really matter if the economy is doing well? If in the next few months, economic figures, employment figures, and so on, are at least better than we anticipate, surely Obama, it's his to lose. Well, think of the United States economy as like a man who's been in a terrible bar fight. And he was, he's been banged on the head and he's knocked on the floor. And he's tried a couple of times to push himself up off the floor. And this last push, now he's six, maybe even eight inches off the floor. But he's still bleeding from every cut. Uh, you know, things are, are bad. I mean, there's a hopeful direction, but things are really bad in the United States. Very big, sharp contrast between the Canadian economy and the American economy. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you got millions and millions of Americans who will be out of work uh, on, voting, on voting day, no matter how much the economy recovers between now and then, it just can't move that fast. Mm -hmm. At this stage, uh, and obviously informed opinion is concluding that, that Romney probably will be the candidate, are there any likely vice presidential names coming forward? And well, two questions, who should it be and who do you think Romney will actually go for? Well, you know, if Rick Santorum and Romney didn't have such a poisonous personal relationship at this point, that would have been one possibility, the yeah. person who gets the second most votes. I, don't, I think the chemistry between them is now so terrible that that's unlikely to happen. Mm. Romney's got a lot of problems at once. He's got a problem with women. He's got a problem with people who make less than $100,000 a year. He's got a problem on the right wing of his party. He's got a problem in the center of the electorate. He may try to use the vice presidential nomination to solve some of those problems, but he can't solve all of them. No, so he's looking for a, a moderate evangelical woman earning 80000 a year. That's not easy, is it? <laughs> but who also is popular with the right wing of the party and speaks Spanish. <laughs> now, the, the, the evangel not the evangelical vote. I mean, let, let's, let's be honest here. The evangelical vote is never going to go for Barack Obama. But, but evangelical activism and energy, um, would, would that really come forward for Romney? I, I can see them voting for him but holding their, their nose quite strongly. Yeah. Yes. Well, one of, the way, one of the things that is striking is how evangelicals are becoming more and more different from the rest of America. And here's a very dramatic example in Michigan. Rick Santorum, devout Catholic, campaigned on Catholic issues, lost the Catholic vote. He was, he was, his strength was with evangelicals. Romney got more Catholic votes than, than uh, Rick, uh, Mitt, uh, Rick Santorum did. Wow. Um, and, and that tells you something about how different evangelical America is becoming from the rest of America, non-evangelical America. Mm. And also how little Catholic the Catholic vote is 
today. I mean, I, I'm sure that hardcore, serious Catholics are at Mass on a Sunday. The majority went for Centaurum. For people who call themselves Catholic, who aren't particularly, they're the same as the rest of middle America. Well, yes and no, because people, Catholics who go to church regularly are actually not very conservative on economic issues. Mm. And in fact, the, the, the more... Uh, the more, for example, the more often a Catholic goes to church, the more likely they are, for example, to rate raising the minimum wage is a very important issue. So the, with the Catholics, yes, with the church-going Catholics, you do get a lot of religious conservatism, but it's not joined to the economic conservatism that Rick Santorum has championed so vociferously. Mm -hmm. Although, of course, there were many in the Republican Party who questioned his economic conservatism. Ann Coulter, for example, said he's more Catholic than conservative. Uh, appropriate? Yeah. Well, I, look, I, I don't think that way of talking about people is, is appropriate. Mm -hmm. I mean, that uh, more Catholic than, I mean, that's not for anybody um, uh, but his own conscience to say. Yep. Um, sent, but what, what Centor, I think, one of, but I think you're putting your finger on something. Republicans are talking about this race as if it's an ideological contest. It's really not. Mm -hmm. Ideology is the weapon. This is a class contest, as indeed all of American politics is becoming a class contest. Romney dominant among people over $100,000 a year. Uh, Santorum in the Republican race dominant among people under 100. In the general election, R Romney will connect very well with those upper income voters, but he is, he is disconnecting from non-upper income voters, which are, of course, the great majority. And, every, and the Republican Party has demanded and demanded of him th that he give them commitments that make it more and more difficult for him to commit, connect to non-wealthy voters in the general election. Mm -hmm. Last 20 seconds, uh, are there any uh, major Republicans sitting back saying, told you so, that's why I'm sitting it out for another four years? <laughs> um, I, look, you can never predict. Uh, a lot of Democrats made that mistake in 1992. They said George H.W. Bush is unbeatable yeah. and Bill Clinton beat him. Okay. All right. We shall see. And we'd love to get you back on the show as well. David, as always, my friend, a great pleasure. Thank you. Th thank you, Michael.